Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to International Pathology Day 2021, focusing on digital pathology um, and aspects of AI, a world's eye view. Um, I'm Claire Verrill, I'm an Associate Professor in Pathology in Oxford, uh, and I'm in conversation today uh, with Dr. Yutran Ding, who likes to be known as Ding, so I'll refer to um, him as Ding throughout the interview. So, so welcome everyone, and, and thanks so much for joining us. And hi, Ding. Hi, nice to see you. Hi, hi. good afternoon. Claire. Nice to meet you too. Great, fantastic. So let's um, let's chat. So um, so t tell me about your career then. So um, I saw that you're a computer scientist by day in Cambridge and uh, um, a founder of XWell by night. So tell me about your day job. What what do you do? Yeah, so so actually uh, it, it's a lot more than that. So I also look out for the kids and pick them up from school. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> but but formally, I I I am currently a data scientist at Cambridge, um, where where I do lots of um, uh, clinical data analysis. And in the evening, I also found a little organization called Xwa, where I trying to make uh, microscopic equipment or pathology easier to assess to people who need it. So. Um, but, but in, in a little bit more detail, so so so, so we have, we we do lots uh, lots of interesting events where I basically Xwell funds funds um, I think I think the, the most interesting bit is uh, we we found a, a few uh, science club in Africa where where the the uh, the, the university students. Can 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 go out to the uh, local schools and uh, teach the uh, uh, young kids what pathology is, what are the things under the microscope, and that sort of things. And 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 also apart from that, we also uh, do a lot of donations where we we give away equipment to pathologists uh, uh, who 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 need a remote consultation. From the expert, but uh, who couldn't afford uh, a slice scanner, things like this. So, so what inspired you to start XWell? So, so actually, before I joined Cambridge, I, I was um, a research, uh, a postdoc researcher at, at Newcastle, where I, I, I spent lots of time writing computer codes, uh, AI software toolbox to 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 help pathologists. Um, analyzing digital pathology slides. So, but then later on, about a couple of years later, uh, I realized one big issue is I mean, uh, all the effort I spent on coding or developing those tools, but then uh, the, the pathologists who really need my toolbox couldn't use it simply because they don't have, uh, they don't have the resources to, to um, obtain a slice scanner, which is quite expensive. Especially those in low, low, low and media income country. So then, then I start tra tracing back, tracking back to the root of the problem. So, because in order for them to use my software, they have first to get a slice scanner. But then, since they can't afford the slice scanner, so so then I was talking to this um uh, this person who used to work in Leica, uh, the uh, uh, the scanner department. And he mentioned one, one thing which was quite interesting is that um, while, while on the one hand, the pathologists from low-income countries, they couldn't afford a scanner. On the other hand, there are lots of unused uh, slide scanner being, being scrapped uh, often. So, so, so once the previous owner uh, upgraded the, the equipment, so they sometimes get rid of the, uh, the scanner they had before or just leave it to dust. So then we came out with this um, uh, program called uh, bring, uh, bring, bring Microscope or Slice Scanner Back to Shine project, <laughs> where we will basically facilitate the donation of unused or retired equipment. And um, so that I, I, I um, um, and bring it to life and transport it to the pathologists <laughs> in Africa. Where, where they actually need it. 
And that's really interesting. And obviously yeah. the theme of today is around digital pathology and AI. How, has the sort of uptake of digital pathology changed how XWell works? Because presumably you would have once upon a time refurbished microscopes and is, is it increasingly slide scanners? I think it's a bit bold because like okay. uh, at the beginning I thought, oh wow, if, if I can get everybody uh, access to, to the slide scanner, then uh, there's they, that that's exactly what they needed, but in fact, that's that's not exactly what they needed. Cause, cause like in, in many part of the uh, uh, African countries, they they actually couldn't even afford a cheap microscope. So some of the microscope. So uh, I was talking to this pathologist in that Nigeria. His microscope was sort of uh, he he found it in the garage. Uh, he <laughs> had to repair it himself uh, to so so that he can. He can and use it for work. So, so actually, like both both equipment are quite useful. So it's not just the slide scan. And then, uh, and then on the other side, uh, even if the pathologists they have access to to the slide scan, but then they don't have the IT resources to get it up and running. They don't have the internet resources to to actually transport slide digital files because there are like multiple gigabytes of image files and to 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 someone say um in the US to get a remote consultation. So in fact many of them actually prefer to have microscope instead of scan scan the slide scanner. Yeah no that's really interesting and, and so, but do you think that slide scanners will break down international sort of barriers um or oh yeah definitely so so I I I was I actually had this plan a long time ago the idea is to to establish to establish a network of uh, of pathologists around the globe. So assume, imagine if every every single pathologist they they have every single one of them has, have access to uh, to their own slide scanner. So so um, so 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 the, uh, when that time comes, uh, whenever they have an issue like like the, they couldn't. They couldn't find, figure out a um, uh, diagnosis, or they, they need a second opinion. They just load the slides in the scanner, then click, and then, uh, uh, like, like say, if there's a social network of pathologies, then, oh, there's a new, 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 new cases need opinions. And then, like, at the same time, immediately multiple people can give, 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 give the advice. So that, that would be really, really that would that would be I mean that would be fantastic wouldn't it yeah, that, that's the dream yeah yeah and, and do you think then that that would enable AI which could perhaps um help in areas where you know pathologists are scarce yeah yeah so I think AI would do the, uh, the initial screening by the, this moment I think what, what AI can do is do some initial screening in a future and uh, give some initial uh, uh advice so, so that uh, which can redu actually reduce the time uh, for pathologists. So, so like without AI, probably uh, I'm not an expert. I'm assuming without AI, pathology usually takes uh, ten or half an hour. Uh, uh, spend half an hour on one case, but then we say AI, they probably can uh, spend much less time on a single case. So within the limited time, they can do more cases with the help of AI. Yeah, no, it's quite, there's, there's change coming for all of us, isn't there, with yeah, AI? And, yeah. Um, like, yeah, like, like so imagine like, like there, because uh, the, the other hand is, the other thing is I, I, I learned that there's some, um, the, the, the lesson that, which is quite unfortunate. So, so I heard less and less uh, uh, medicine, medicine students are, 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 are taking pathologies Fashion future, so um, so then there will be less and less resources. But I think on, on the one hand, is uh, there are less and less pathologists able to provide second opinion. To them. Uh, so then, with the help of AI, then then uh, even with limited resources, the it, it, it won't it still won't make uh, too much difference. If I if, even if there are less and less pathologists. And on the one other time is that because of um, um, uh, 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 um, it, it, imagine imagine when 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 the medicine students and um, they they are 
it's at a time where they they need to decide which which profession they need to choose. Now, then probably they, they said, oh, they're like, I can be a surgeon or I can be a radiologist. Oh, wow, pathologists actually have their own slide scanner where they can just load microscope slides into this tiny little machine and then uh, uh, bring it up to the computer and then they can get more diagnoses from other colleagues around the world. That's, that's a really cool profession. I'll do pathology. So that, that, that so, so like I think with AI and pathology, there's a lot of potential and lots of advantages. I think you're right. And I think that the technology is really inspiring that, that younger generation, you know, to, to get involved in pathology. Um, and as well, so for XWAL, as well as sort of supplying equipment, I've seen that um, sort of education and engagement is like a really key part of what you do. Uh, and you mentioned your kids. Like, it, it, do you think it's important to engage with the younger generation with kids to inspire yeah, them? Yeah, definitely. Like, like I gave microscope to my kids. I loved it. And uh, there was one time I took a video of him playing on the microscope and teach him how to load the slides into the scanners and yeah, teach him actually how to how to make a microscope slides with a cabbage or how to do the staining. So so that he loved it. And uh, after that, he was, oh daddy, when can we do it again? I wanted to do it again. <laughs> and then sometimes I, I post this video on social media and people, are, wow, that's so cute, so adorable. Oh, what's that that machine he's using? So it, it, it's like like the uh, like just this little things and can make lots of differences. Yeah, no, yeah. it's really, I saw um, it must have been one of your kids in a, in a duck costume dancing by a slide <laughs> scanner, which was so cute. Um, and yeah, and I think that was an example of a hospital, the Cleveland Clinic, um, supplying a scanner to a hospital in. Yeah, in yeah, Kenya. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, tell me a bit more about that. Yeah, so uh, so because once we had this. Um, uh, my uh, retired microscope with or retired scanners back to shine program on the internet. So about uh, like uh, about uh, a month or two months later, I received this message saying, uh, "Oh, we have loads of scanners to donate." I was like, "What? A loads? I couldn't even get one." <laughs> Actually, they have loads of retired microscope from. A project long time ago, and now they don't need it anymore. So, so they're thinking about uh, 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 making good use of it. And then apparently they 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 look up on Google and found our page, and then then then, then they decided to to get, uh, donate all these microscopes so that we can uh, facilitate the donation and, and ship it to to the others who actually need it. So, uh, but then it's it's not that. Uh, as, as as simple as sounds, but later I found out it's uh, it's not just about like they donate the microscope, uh, the, the, the slice scanner, and then we just directly ship it to another console. Uh, so so in fact we we we've been receiving applications saying oh I need a microscope, oh I need slice scanner, and this is our situation. We do this number of slides a day, but but then. It took us a, uh, a while to, to find out who's actually needed and who's actually have the resources to, to maintain the microscope. Like, like, do they really have pathologists on the other side of the computer uh, providing consultation? Do they actually have the IT resources to, to store the large images, the, um, the, uh, the, the internet? So, so like, I think even that it took us half a year to actually find the first uh, uh, applicants in Kenya. So where, where they, I, I like, like re I really thought, okay, th this is the person, uh, this is the group that they actually will make good use of the scanners. Uh, so, so apparently they, they already been collaborating for a long time where the uh, pathologists in Kenya send images, uh, single, single images mm -hmm. from the microscope to pathologists in the US where they could provide a diagnosis report within 24 hours time frame. And having this slice scanner will definitely uh, upgrade or increase efficiency. Uh, instead of having a single field of view, they can have the whole digital, uh, the slides digitized and get a much, much more accurate, accurate uh, a diagnosis. And then later, uh, so, so, but but then that's not it. That, that that's 
even have uh, know where to ship it is not the end. And then we figured out, we, we realized okay, there are other things. Like, uh, I think they, we will spend a lot of time getting this uh, certificate of conformity. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just by uh, like, even if you're donating this like that scan, slide scanner, they wouldn't accept it as a customer because you have to work, uh, apply for the certificate. Uh, we have to get clearance. Yeah, uh, and, and it took another, another half a year or a year to get everything ready. And then finally, I think three, two months ago, we, we finally shipped the, um, the uh, scanner to Kenya. And then the other stuff, there's a training and then setting up. Unfortunately, even now we still haven't got it set up. And then um, um, because of the technical issues, because everything is doing remotely through Skype, and they don't have the technical person on the other side to know how this machine actually works. Also, and the, the, the images, uh, the, the video call quality is really bad. So they always have to guess, oh, where went wrong? Is it this? Is it this? And then, uh, but, but then they, they, uh, I, think, I think actually tomorrow we're meeting again, trying to get it set up. Uh, hopefully, uh, oh, oh, okay. So, so that's how, not it. Like even if you have a scanner up and running, that's not enough because you need a platform to actually upload the slides and manage the the loads of different slides and and do all the uh, do do all the report. Uh, no, but I think yeah. I think you've, you've it, given us a lot to think about. Yeah, because I mean I think yeah. it just highlights that it, you know deploying digital pathology technology is not just about plugging the scanner in. There's yeah, so much exactly. more to think about. You know, and, and, and it's, you know, sending it, um, you know, to, to, to another country requires even more thinking about. So, no, that, that's yeah. really interesting. Yeah. Um, and do you think, how, how has COVID affected things? Because obviously there were sort of supply chain disruptions across international boundaries. Has, has COVID, the COVID pandemic changed how x -Well is working? I, I think about the positive side of COVID. Actually, COVID... Uh, uh, Actually, COVID gave a really good excuse why why digital pathology is important. Because uh, I, 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 I was talking to um, a pathologist from Worcester, and she mentioned like when COVID started, they had to go to the hospital, collect the slides from this little mailbox, uh, bring it back home, uh, where do they uh, uh, reporting uh, on their own uh, that, um, on their microscope at home, and then then bring the everything back to the hospital. So, mm -hmm. uh, so which is quite, well, even they were working from home, but then it, it was still risking them for exposure, uh, exposing to the COVID virus. And then they have to do the driving all the time. And it was quite, 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 quite inconvenient. But then if they had the, the facility set up, they could just, they don't need a microscope at home. They just, they could literally just, uh, open up the laptop and then start doing the day job at home. It has, it's, it's provided some real solutions, hasn't it, um, yeah. during COVID. For those listening, how, how can people get involved in XWOW? What are you looking for? Are you looking for people's time or equipment? I think I'm looking for uh, inspirations, really, because right. like every day we are, we are investigating, we are exploring new opportunities, how to bring pathologies to the public, how to make it actually um, dazzle, I'd say. Because mm -hmm. what I found quite sad is uh, like pathologists are really actually play a really, really important roles in, in healthcare. Uh, all, all the uh, cancer diagnosis, so they don't realize what, how important pathology is. Uh, so, so I think, Overall, my, my goal is at least the first step is trying to, to introduce, uh, introduce uh, uh, trying to bring pathology out in the public, let them know how important it is so, so the pathologists can get more attention. And then they, they can actually know why, why pathology is fascinating. So, so, like, so, so one thing is I've been doing lots of um, content creations on social media where I, I use the simplest way to explain uh, the the the, the intre interesting bit about what what so so like the um, things on the microscope so like say what tomato looks like on the microscope what 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 yogurt looks like on the 
microscope. But, but I think this is the first step <laughs> to actually introduce what pathology is to the public. So the once they get more attention, then the rest will go. So. Yeah, no, I think so, I yeah. think you're you're right. And it's really important to, to raise the visibility of pathology. And one of your tweets I saw you suggested we do that with life hacks. Um, yeah. well, I, had to, I had to look up what a life hack is because I'm showing my age now. But like, um, did you have any suggestions? Uh, let, let me think. I, I think the, the most interesting bit is uh, like there, there was a topic. Uh, um, so you, you, you eat steak. Like, like sometimes there's lots of argument about what's actually the red juice. <laughs> so some people say it's blood. Some people is, uh, say it's not blood. It's, uh, yeah. Is it hemoglobin? Is it called hemoglobin? Yeah. yeah, which is quite healthy, especially for yeah, muscle builders. But, but so, so there's one time I actually made a video uh, about, oh, let's, let's just see what this red juice is about. So, so, so I make some uh, medium, red, uh, medium red steaks and then make a sort of like blood smear <laughs> with it and load it on microscope, stain it, load on microscope and see, okay, this is blood smear. Oh, there are actually living cells in it. <laughs> <laughs> which which actually change a lot of people's opinions about what's inside the state and and that that, that like I, I received a few messages oh this is quite interesting and uh, I never know to actually look at steak on the microscope this <laughs> way and then which I took the opportunity to explain oh this is actually what um, something related the technology is actually quite often used by the pathologists and you should check it out what they do. <laughs> yeah, no, no, this is really exciting, isn't it? Yeah, and to bring it to a new audience and, and in different yeah, ways, yeah. It's, it's very exciting. So, so since you founded XWOW, is there is there one moment that stands out for you that has been particularly special? Uh, particularly special, let's see. I, I think I love the uh, moment when, when now, uh, because like uh, when, whenever we, uh, so the, there, there was there was a moment where uh, so you know we've been found, we've donated this uh, microscope and so that they, they can organize school clubs uh, in Africa and then well, one one of the um, uh, students who've been finding equipment they, they he, he got a little bit a little bit creative and let the kids like a group of uh, uh, kids uh, to to like uh, like just give a shout like thank you X well. <laughs> and he sent me the video. I was wow, this, this is this is fantastic. I need to keep doing this. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's lovely. That's so sweet. Yeah, and yeah. Um, yeah, and and obviously it's International Pathology Day. So, what made you say yes to the podcast? What's important to you about International Pathology Day? Uh, what's so important? I think the the pathology itself is the important keywords. People should Google more about pathology. <laughs> what pathologists do are really really important but, but people are not aware of this this fact so ho hopefully we will we, we, like uh, with, with, with events like interna international pathologies and, and, and the general public will know the magic behind it yeah. No, that's fantastic. Well, um, it's been so fascinating talking to you. I'm personally very inspired by everything you've done. Um, and if anyone listening wants to find out more, you have a website, don't you? There's a YouTube channel I saw and, and various things on, on Twitter. So, so, so do uh, have a look at those. Um, yeah, and I think with that, any closing thoughts, Ding, at all? Uh, not at the moment, but I'm no? really, really glad to be on this podcast to, to actually ex express myself what's inside my mind and, and also give me opportunity to, uh, to keep thinking what else I need to do. Great well it's been absolutely fascinating talking to you and thank you so much um, for taking part and thank you to everyone who's listened in and uh, yeah thanks again.